Greetings to my Leadenhall family and friends. We greet you with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We pray that you have been remaining safe as we still navigate through the season of COVID. We thank God for the ability to be able to come to you through our YouTube ministry, that you may be blessed with the word of God. And we pray that as we have continued in our series of growing in faith, that you found comfort and knowledge that the Lord still abides with us, even when we struggle, when matters of faith, when we have doubts, when we have issues, when our faith becomes disturbed, we know that the Lord is still working with us in us and through us. And so we're grateful today as we come to you to continue to share his word. And we pray that you will continue to support this ministry, that we may uh, preach the word, that we may continue to do the work of outreach in our community. And for those of you who have a desire to support our ministry, we ask that you go to our webpage, LentonHallBC.org. You can click on the giving tab and there you can submit your contribution to the church. For those members who still continue to support us through your stewardship, we thank God for you. You can also mail your stewardship in directly to the church if you're unable to do so online. We also are grateful for all of those who continue to come and to worship with us in person in our in-person worship services on Sunday beginning at 10.30 a.m. We thank God for the fellowship that we've been able to have even in the season of COVID. We ask that when you do come, however, that you observe our three W's to wear your mask, to wash your hands at all times, watch your distance, to follow the directions of the ushers, that we may continue to serve the Lord, but we are safe and courteous and kind towards one another while we do so. And so once again, we're excited for what the Lord has been doing with us in this season, and we hope and pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. But I want to turn your attention today to our scripture, uh, which we find coming from Paul's letter in Romans, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, beginning with verse number 16. Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 16, Paul writes, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we do thank you for this time of sharing. We pray, Lord God, that you will guide our hearts and our minds. And as we continue to look to grow in our faith, Lord God, that you will continue to lead us and guide us along the way. Bless us in our time of sharing. Here's our prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to talk about believing in faith. Believing in faith. I remember hearing an old saying a long time ago, and some of you may have heard it, and I don't know, I might even get it wrong, but it went something like, believe some of what you see and some of none of what you hear. Because the truth of the matter is, a lot of people get their facts all messed up. I believe that some people choose to believe what it is that they want to believe simply because it fits comfortably and neatly into their lives. All of us know that we get information from so many different sources these days. Most of us, we can turn on our television. Some of us, uh, our news is just carried around in the palm of our hands. In fact, some people are so glued to all of the media outlets that are available, uh, just as a click of an app on your phone, you can open up and see your Facebook feed and what everybody's talking about. You can go on Instagram or you can look on Snapchat you look on TikTok, you can look on Instagram, you can look pretty much anywhere to get any kind of information. But all information ain't good information and everything that you hear ain't good for you. In fact, there are a whole lot of people who have been still holding on to a lie that an election was stolen simply because somebody wants to feed them fake news. Yes, we have all gotten information and some of the information that we've gotten have been bad information. We've been fed a bunch of fiction. A whole lot of people says, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to take the COVID vaccine because they use vaccines to experiment on black people in Tuskegee. Well, you might have got your facts a little bit confused 
The Tuskegee experiment was not because they gave them a vaccination. The Tuskegee experiment was because they didn't give them a vaccination. And they wanted to see, you know, if those who received the vaccination were immune from contain, uh, 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 becoming contagious and those who did not receive it, what the effects would be. So the truth of the matter is, it would behoove us not to go the way of the Tuskegee experiment and make sure that we do, in fact, get the vaccination. But it's all about what kind of information you're going to get. And the truth of the matter is that all of us have come to a place in our lives where we can kind of go through information fatigue. We can go through news burnout. We, we can just get to a point in place where we don't even know what to listen to. And the truth of the matter is, sometimes we don't want to listen to nobody at all. But what do you do, however, when some of the information that you need is very important to your very life, very important to your growth in your own faith? Who do you listen to? Who do you turn to? Who do you trust? Because the truth of the matter is there are a lot of people who talk about churches nowadays and the relevance of church nowadays and what is the church doing in the community? What is the church doing for the community? Why should I listen to anything that the church has to say, what the preacher has to say? Why should I even deal with it? Because for many, the church has fallen to a place of irrelevance. So they don't even get information from the church. How does one grow in their faith when you don't know where to get your information from? And yet the church is called, the church's mandate is to help people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that they may continue to grow in their faith and be ever drawn closer to our Lord and Savior. It is a struggle. It's a struggle that we've dealt with for quite some time. It is the struggle, the paradigm of, of the message and the messenger. And when we look at this text today, we find that Paul is taking up the mantle of this particular issue because he's writing his seminal work in the book of Romans. And in this 10th chapter, Paul is beginning to address his desire that all of Israel might be saved. And in spite of his desire that all of Israel might be saved, Paul is coming to the realization that some folk just don't want to be saved. The truth of the matter is that some people like the institution to be the way that it is. In other words, they are more concerned with church than they are with souls. They're, they're more concerned with, with style versus substance. They're more concerned with their power more so than people. And Paul has this desire and Paul says, I have a desire that Israel might be saved. But instead of Israel looking to be saved, they're creating a system of their own righteousness and say that if we just live a certain kind of way, if we just follow that covenant that was given to us, according to Abraham, that somehow or another we can declare ourselves righteous. Even if we don't take care of poor folk, if we go to church and do church real good the Lord will bless us. Even if we don't hold up to the mandates that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said for us to do, to treat our neighbors as we do ourselves, and yet we don't allow certain people into our worship space because of our rules and our rituals, our own sense of righteousness. Because of all of these things, they wanted to hold on to the way things were because the truth of the matter is, sometimes many of us, it would be a lot easier if we just knew what the checklist was. Uh, what is it that I need to do? Because the Bible says just confessing with our mouths and believing in our hearts, we shall be saved. But so many of us believe that it can't be that simple. There ought to be a checklist of stuff that I need to do, because if I can gauge my life against the checklist, then I can know where I stand with God. But here it is. Here it is. It is the faith that we walk in. It is the faith that we hold to that uh, his grace is sufficient for us. And for some people, it's just not enough to say that the grace of God is, in fact, sufficient. I, I need some rules. I need some guidelines. I need some guideposts. I need some signposts to let me know that I'm doing the right thing. Because sometimes, let's face it, most of us have said at one point or another, I, I don't feel so saved. 
we are saved, but, but, but salvation is supposed to feel a certain kind of way to us. Many of us, we look at our lives in the shambles that have been created in all of it, and we say to ourselves, how is it that I can be saved? And my life seems to be a mess. Can the Lord really help me put my pieces back together? Can the Lord really restore hope? Can the Lord really help me in my time of trouble? Because I think I need to do a little bit more than what I'm doing in order to receive a certain level of righteousness. This was the attitude that Israel had. Paul was beginning to preach the gospel because Paul understood that in order for them to receive the gospel, somebody had to be bold enough to proclaim it. Might I suggest today that the problem that so many people have when it comes to the knowledge of Jesus Christ is that there are not enough bold messengers willing to share the gospel. Uh, there are a lot of undercover Christians at UCC Church. Uh, I, I, I don't mean like the United Church of Christ. I don't want nobody to go and hit me up on Facebook and Twitter and say, oh, he talked about the UCC. I'm talking about undercover Christians, not the United Church of Christ. They are undercover Christians, people who don't even want to proclaim that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Where's the messenger in a time like this? Here's Paul being bold deciding that I'm going to share the gospel message even in a difficult season, even in a time when people don't want to hear it. And I believe that the problem with so many people when it comes to it, Paul says as he opens up, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how then shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher. Paul says they got to have a preacher in order to hear the word. But here's the problem that so many people have when it comes to issues of faith. Uh, they don't have a, a problem with preachers. Sometimes it's just who the preacher is. And in this case, the problem is the messenger. They got a problem with who the messenger is because Paul used to be on their side. Paul used to be a persecutor of those people who claim to be followers of Christ. And now all of a sudden, Paul is showing back up to preach to the same people whose side he used to be on and say, look, I'm a changed man. Here it is. Some folk will only remember you at the last chapter of your life. They don't see where you are in the new chapter of your life. In other words, there are some people who only know you when you were a before Christ person. They don't know you now that you are received Christ person. And somewhere between his persecution and his proclamation, Paul went through a transformation on the Damascus Road where he met Jesus Christ for his own self as Lord and Savior. And yet while he's trying to proclaim the gospel is being thrown in his face, all the stuff that he used to do. And I believe that that's the problem with so many of us when it comes to sharing the gospel message that we are afraid that people are going to judge us as if we need to be perfect in order to be saved. Oh, but when somebody tries to flip it on you, when you try to share the gospel message, you say that's what makes my Jesus so special because he can even use me as flawed as I am to be a blessing to somebody else. Oh yeah, you can pardon me because I'm just a work in progress. But I know that if the Lord began a work in me, he will continue to perform the work in me. So you just stay tuned because the new and improved me is on the way. But I just want to share the message with you that the Lord can save you because the Lord has saved me. Here it is. A believing faith that's not based upon who is sharing the gospel with you. Some of us, we block out our blessings simply because we don't like who the preacher is. We don't like who the messenger is. They had a problem with Paul. Not only did they have a problem with Paul as the messenger, they had a problem with the message. Because here it is, Paul says to everyone 
that believes to the Jew and to the Gentile. I, I, I want to pause here because some of us believe that Jesus is exclusively ours. Mm -mm -mm. Let me help somebody right now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him. In other words, he's not just the God of the African-American. He's not just the God of the European. He's not just the God of the Asian. He is the God of all creation. And whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Here it is. But because we got problems with some people, people down here in the earthly realm. We also have that same problem transposed in the spiritual realm. That's why on Sundays between 11 o'clock and 1 p.m., the church is the most segregated place in the country. Here it is. The message is still plain that he loves all of us and the Lord is not exclusive to no one group. Some people want to just have Jesus to be their guardian and their guide. It's an amazing thing that someone once said that two armies at war at each other are both praying to the same God to deliver them from their enemy. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch that. Two armies praying to the same God to be delivered from their enemies. They both believe in the same God and yet they're praying for God to take side in something that's destructive as war when the Lord is calling us to an ethic of love and peace and yet for some reason or another we think that God has to be on our side. We got a problem with a message that includes so many people. We want to keep some people out and allow some people in just because it arouses our own sensitivity Activities. But here it is. God loves us all and he calls everyone to this faith to believe in. And yet there are people who have a problem with the messenger. They got a problem with the message that says all can be saved. But they also got a problem with the Messiah. They got a problem with with Jesus. I shared recently with some friends as we had a conversation and I said, you know, a whole lot of people love God, but they got a problem with Jesus. People have a problem understanding the incarnation of God in flesh that walked among us, dwelt among us, and who said things like, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father because I and the Father are one. They begin to become confused because they say, is it one God or is it three gods? I believe in God, but I got a problem with Jesus. I got a problem with Jesus because I grew up with this Eurocentric ideology of who Jesus is. It's a white Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes, and y'all know know how it is as black people we've been beaten up how you gonna worship a blonde hair blue eyed devil but if you really read the gospel when you really read the Bible the Bible says that his feet were like brass and his hair was like wool and his eyes were like flames of fire and I don't know about you but it does not have Michelangelo's depiction of who Jesus is some of us we ain't got a problem with God but we got a problem with Jesus and so we want to reject the the message because we don't like the image of the Messiah but this is what I want to share with somebody Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed here it is he loved us so much that even in spite of ourselves he went to Calvary's cross that's something that you can believe in. It's a faith that you can hold on to. Despite the messenger, you can look beyond faults and allow the Lord to see all of your needs. In spite of all the things that seem to confuse you about the message, is it a God of inclusion? And I mean all inclusion, because y'all know nowadays we got issues with certain people. And yet the Lord still loves us. 
and he died on the cross for us. And that's a gospel you can believe and a faith worth holding on to. God bless you. Have his smile upon you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your son Jesus who died upon the cross and has allowed us to walk by this new faith and not by sight. Continue to guide us and lead us and we shall continue to honor your blessed name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, I don't know what you may be wrestling with in your life. You may be dealing with doubt. You may be dealing with depression. You may be dealing with disappointment. You may be disillusioned by the things of this world. But there's one thing that we know for certain and two things that we know for sure. That God loves us and that his love never fails. And he loved us so much that he gave his son. The Bible declares in John 3, 16, that he so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him would never perish, but would have everlasting life. And we can receive this gift of life through the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Bible declares that all we have to do is confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Invite him in, allow his spirit to dwell within you, and you shall be saved. Let's pray together. Father God, we pray right now that those who have been listening, Father, if they have not received you as their Lord and Savior, that as they have asked for forgiveness of their sin, Lord God, and ask that they receive you through the power and presence of your spirit, that you will strengthen their lives, Lord God, that you will allow them to grow in their faith as you continue to bless them in their walk. We thank you, Lord God, as always for your word, for it is truly a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So continue to guide our steps, Lord God, as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight. And we shall continue to give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. And welcome to the family of faith.